All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been working things in the spirit today. You know, the day after the weekend services, I woke up feeling strong and uh, the day's been going long. I love it. And um, got in, got my, you know, workout in physically at the gym and just got things rolling and things moving and been praying. Had several prayer meetings today. So awesome. And uh, we just got a hook on the book. I mean, we're walking in the word, walking with the wealth, walking with the pronouncement of prolific prosperity, where there is no disparity, only clarity. And we thank God for it. Glory to God. It's just amazing what God does when you avail yourself to him. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for everybody that is making themselves available to God. And getting in the flow and in the know. With good things, God things, wonderful things. So we had a really great, strong service last night. And talked about wisdom the day before. On Sunday, we talked about uh, largeness of heart and prosperity. So we're moving right with it in syncopation and alliteration. And uh, the formation of everything creatively wonderful in the wealth of God's world. Hallelujah. We live in God's world. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. I like that Psalm 43, 3. It says, oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. And I thank God for it. Hallelujah. I'm at one of the restaurants here in town. And there's only about two or three people in here. And people are afraid to come inside. And I thank God for it. Hallelujah. I'm in here all by my lonesome and able to do some recording and it's beautiful. God just makes a way, sets you in a large place, he makes room for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if, whatever he has to do to get it done, he will get it done. But it says, oh, send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. And this is our credo. This is our cry. This is our, uh, this is our uh, desire. Because, you know, we're doing, we're giving due diligence. We're giving due diligence. And I know you are too, Hosea 10, 13. It said you plowed wickedness and you've reaped iniquity. You've eaten the fruit of lies. Because thou didst trust in thy way and in the multitude of thy mighty men. So it's not in the strength of men. It's not in the strength of horses. It's not in the strength of man's own ability. You know, we know that. The remnant knows that. And so we've allowed our hearts to be plowed up. We've broken up the fallow ground. And we've let the word of God be sown, not iniquity. And then we're eating the fruits of righteousness, not the fruits of lies. We're eating the fruits of righteousness and not the fruit of lies and not the fruit of our own way because we're choosing God's way. We have the smartness. We have the IQ. We have the, uh, we're set on knowing God's formula. The way God unravels things and unwraps things, the way God does things, we are so into how he makes things happen that we are just set on fire by heaven itself, just letting him alliterate, alliterate our lives with symphonic uh, attention. Glory to God like a great conductor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As it is in heaven, so let it be in the earth for all that is worth. There is no dearth, and God gives birth to everything good. There you go. Anything planted in our lives by the enemy must come out now by the roots. In the name of Jesus. anything planted in our life, in our surroundings, by the enemies must come out by the roots now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I declare and I speak and I say, decry, prophesy, pray that we flow in uncommon breakthroughs, uncommon miracles, uncommon favor, uncommon success. And it all locates us by the jealous fire of Jehovah. The jealous fire of Jehovah knows where we are located. We are the apple of God's eye. We are written on the palm of his hand. Glory to God. God knows our thoughts even before we express them. Thank you, Jesus. He knows the very hairs on our head. Every hidden enemy assigned against us, 
is being dealt with now immediately by God Almighty in the name of Jesus. Every hidden enemy assigned against us in our good, in our welfare, in our prosperity is being dealt with immediately right now by God Almighty, the Almighty One, in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. Let God arise and let all the foundational witchcraft scatter now in the name of Jesus. Let God arise and let all foundational witchcraft scatter in the name of Jesus right at this moment. You know, it takes real power to get and maintain real prosperity. It takes real power to get and get and maintain real prosperity. If we are speaking and decreeing that we have the power to get wealth, not only to get wealth, but to maintain and sustain wealth in our lives. And, you know, it's, you know, there's a lot of shouting to be done of, over this and about this, and this is what we've been doing today, just proclaiming God's goodness and God's greatness. Hallelujah. John 8, 31 and 32. You know, it talks about if you, uh, it talks about if you abide in my word, then you are my disciples. And then verse 32, it says, uh, and you shall know the truth and the truth of what shall make you free, free from indebtedness, free from the bill collectors, free from uh, loss, free from imploding and breaking down and not being able to function during this cycle that we're in right now. Instead of the corona cycle, God spoke to me that a couple of days ago and said, we're in the corn cycle. We're in the corn, not corona, but corn harvest season. Look at that. Ooh, hallelujah. And I went to the shopping center or went to the grocery store just the other day. I was watching how the corn prices have changed. And now corn sets up about, you know, six for a dollar. It heads of corn right now. You know, it's just like God gives you information you don't even know about. It. I, I'm not a farmer. I don't really know about these things, but. God shows you, but showed me the prosperity in the middle of the disparity. Shows me the clarity in the middle of um, the bleakness and the blindness and the darkness. Hallelujah. He shows you. Hallelujah. Because we're the apple of his eye. Yeah, he's jealous over us with a godly, goodly jealousy. And he's going to do us good. And he, he loves it when we prosper. Psalm 35, 27, let them shout for joy and rejoice who favor my vindication. Let them say, continue the Lord be magnified who delights in the prosperity. Look at that. He delights in the prosperity of his servants. And, you know, I can really relate. Um, I can really relate to this king whose father was Amaziah. In Second Chronicles 26, 4, he did right in the sight of the Lord. I love that to begin with. He did right in the sight of the Lord. We, we want to do right in the sight of God because everything we do is in the sight of God. According to all that his father Amaziah had done, he commanded and continued to seek God. He continued to seek God. He continued to. He continued to. We got to press in and press on. It's got to be consistent. It's got to be constant. It's got to be uh, where we are relentless, where we continue and, and operate and don't quit, putting your hand to the plow and not turning back. That's the key to breaking through the stronghold and breaking the strangulation and breaking these uh, dissonant angulations of the enemy. He continued to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding through the visions of God. See? So, the, God began to give Zechariah visions and dreams, and he began to talk to the king. God's going to give you visions and dreams. God's going to talk to the men and women of God, and they're going to begin to give you insight through the Holy Ghost because some of them are gifted, and they have the ability to speak into your life. And as long as he sought the Lord, as long as he sought the Lord, he continued to seek the Lord in verse 5. And in the bottom half of this, it says, as long as he sought the Lord, L-O-R-D, Lord, L-O-R-D, the secret tetrical name of God, that secret, holy, creative name of God, Lord, Lord of the universe, Lord of the harvest, Lord of all flesh, Lord, hallelujah, of creation. My God, I feel that in the Holy Ghost. As long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. 
Who does the prospering? God does the prospering. We do the seeking. And God does the prospering. Let us keep that in our single-minded mind. If our eye be single, our whole body will be full of light. And just don't wait out there for the prophets to speak. You, you've got to do your own diligence. You've got to uh, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Every one of us has to do, uh, give our lives due uh, diligence to get things done for ourselves. The man of God is not going to live your life for you. You've got to know that you've got a responsibility in your own personal life. But if you don't go there, you're going to be listening with uh, itching ears to hear some prophet prophesy over you. Jeremiah 28 and 15, prophecy should be confirmational, not directive. We have the Holy Spirit within us that can direct us in the way we could go. We should go in 1 John chapter 2, read the whole chapter. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto uh, Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah. The Lord hath not sent thee, because thou makest the people trust in a lie. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name, and I have not sent them. I have not sent them. So if you're just going to stay uh, deluded, you're going to be excluded um, from the best that God has, because uh, the trickery of the enemy, the seduction of the enemy is going to come and take over. I mean, we got to get this thing straight, friends. There's enough resources there for you. I mean, get excited about seeking God. Get excited about getting a hold of God. I mean, look at Solomon. Solomon received 50,000 pounds of gold every year as one of his residual incomes. 50,000 pounds of gold every year. That's only one of his residual income accounts. Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. Jesus said, a lily is arrayed with more glory than all of Solomon's kingdom. Jesus, the I am, I am that I am, and I am, he said, before Abraham was, is living inside of us. I will be whom I will be, and I am that I am. Greater than Solomon is here. Do you understand what I'm saying? My God, I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. I feel it in the name of Jesus. God wants to reveal it. He wants to seal it for you and really sustain and maintain you in a very dynamic, Holy Ghost functional way. Wiping all the doubts, all the fears, all the phobias, all the concerns, all of the neg negations and negative things. Just letting the four winds blow. Blow out all the chaos. Blow out all the disrupt, corrupt. Blow out all the stagnation, inflation, degradation. Andoroboka, in the name of Jesus, we decree it, speak it, prophesy it. And we pray it right now in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. But you know, some people will never change their uh, their look. Some people will never change their modus operandi. Some people are just settled down in themselves so much that their self has become a replacement for God. You know, Jeremiah 3.3, 3, Therefore the showers have been withheld. No spring rains have fallen. Yet you have... The brazen look of a prostitute and you refuse to be ashamed. But yet you have the brazen look of a prostitute and you refuse to be ashamed. Look at that. You refuse to be ashamed. God cannot teach some people. I mean, leopards, uh, some of these old leopards were not going to change their spots. You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. You can take water, a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Some people are just bent on their brazenness. And they refuse to be ashamed. They're not teachable and they're not reachable. And how much more time are you, are, are, I'm talking to somebody, how much more time are you going to waste? How much more time are you going to sit on the sidelines? Because, you know, some people have this false image that they're going to receive something by gift. This all of a sudden going to come to them. They're going to get an inheritance or they're going to win the lottery or something's going to happen. Some miracle's going to take place. It's going to fall pie from the sky. And they're just sitting there in dullness sitting there in uh, laziness, sitting there, and, you, and God is looking at you and say, why are you sitting on the leaves? Why uh, have you become complacent? Why? You know, like God's given a talent, three talents or five talents. God says, according to our several ability, and God's saying, what are you doing with what I gave you? Occupied till I come. 
that, that Occupy Telecom is about stewardship. Read it for yourself. Go back and find the phrase and read it for yourself. I've preached on that already. Um, but God is bringing things like you've never heard it before. Things are really happening. Um, he's breaking all the fast and detached witchcraft out of our lives completely. Um, he's pushing all that we have into a miracle, psychotic glory spin. He's pushing all that we are, all that represent all that we own. He's pushing it now into a cyclonic glory spin. All of these audios that I posted, over 50 audios in the last several months, uh, this whole push of service after service and being there throughout the coronavirus uh, dispensation, never missing a service, pushing and praying and prevailing and watching God move in his glory and then having several visitations during this season, you know, and all this momentum and people that are outside looking in, they, they think it's, it's nice. It's, it's cute. It's, it's, it's wonderful, but you know what? You're missing out. If you don't get in the flow, don't get on go. Don't get in the no, get in the, get in the waves of glory, get in the cyclonic action in the spin that God has put us in because it's going to carry us over, carry us into the booty, the bounty, the blessing, the breakout, the breakthrough, and in every possible way in Jesus' name. All right. Well, that's amazing, isn't it? I thank God for it. And God, God is amazing. I mean, he's, he's spectacular. All right, then. This is, uh, is Pastor Steve Sterling again, signing off, signing out of here, uh, saying sayonara, but... Uh, you know, there's people that are ready to do something. And, you know, if, if you can't think of anything to do yourself, you can let your seed begin to do something for you. That's right. Just put a seed into motion. Get some commotion stirred up and get a visitation going in your financial area. I mean, even a child can do that. It's easy to do. Just put something in play so God can uh, say some good things for you and uh, with you and about you and get your life um, crystallized and get a, a leverage going, amen, and just get some of these uh, spiritual things that I've been talking about activated and actuated and factuated in your life. So you can go ahead and uh, sow an electronic seed by texting 833-589-2618. That's 833-589-2618. And then um, you'll go ahead, and it'll send you a um, it'll send you back a response, and they'll have uh, every form of credit card that you want to utilize. You put it on their platform, and go ahead and just um, you know execute by in the uh, subject line putting the word "give," and that will get the ball rolling. And also, you can also uh, take part of it. And you go to facebook.com and then so there at the um, in the messenger there's a dollar sign button you click on the dollar sign button and you can send seed that way or you can go to dallasrevivalcenter.com and so by paypal and there's a donate button there that's connected to paypal you can do it that way and uh, that will work for you I mean, there's all kinds of ways and means whereby to get things done. If you want to even go by P.O. Box, P.O. Box 271636, Dallas, Texas, 75227. P.O. Box 271636, Dallas, Texas, 75227. Care of Dallas Revival Center. Uh, your checks and money orders make them out to UAWOMI, UAWOMI, and, uh, and then send it that way. Uh, there's just so many ways or come to service and so that way. I mean, it, there's so many ways to get going. Just let this activate. And if you've sown seeds before, you know, um, a lot of people are the misgiving that if they sow one seed or one large seed, that that's going to do it for them. That's just going to open up everything and, and God's just going to move the miraculous. That's not the way God works. God works in a continual seed sowing and cycling process. Seed 
sow to seed, seed to harvest, and harvest back into uh, more seed and seed and sowing and back into a greater harvest. And, you know, it, the cycle, it's, it's like putting your seed, uh, putting your money to work and uh, getting in a rhythm, getting in a pattern, getting in a motion, getting in a commotion. I mean, I mean God is a giver par excellence. God operates by faith all the time. When are we going to stop giving? Well, we never will. It's going to carry over right into heaven. It's amazing, isn't it? But, oh, the windows of heaven that open, oh, the blessings that are poured out, they're uncontainable, unmanageable. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There you have it. All right, I'll let you go for now. God bless you. Pastor T. Sterling is saying, we'll see you real, real soon. Uh,